All right, so because uh, you're probably in an algebra class in school right now, uh, you're gonna look at this and be like, oh, I don't know how to solve this. I'm gonna do some algebra. I'm gonna multiply, I'm gonna distribute, I'm gonna do all this stuff. Good for you. If you wanna do that for practice, go for it. But remember, the point of a PSAT, the point of an SAT is to get as many questions right as possible in the very limited time that you have. And we're only halfway through this section, so we're gonna get some harder stuff. Algebra here is gonna take time. We've got fractions, we've got negatives, we've got distribution. We could guess and check, and that's actually not so bad because look at these answers for X, they're not messy numbers. We could plug them in and we could guess and check not in a, a terrible way, it's doable. But there's an even better way, which is to not have to do any math at all, just let the calculator do it. So this equation, it, it only has one variable. I know there's two X's, but for algebra purposes, there's only one variable, there's just an X, there's no Y. So we can enter this into Desmos. So let's do that and see what we get. So um, one fourth, we gotta be careful with all these parentheses. So X plus five, um, and this is why I recommend a laptop and not a tablet for the SAT when you actually take it, is it's a little tough to type this stuff on a tablet. Uh, X plus five, so I'm just kinda going through here, and equals negative seven. So there's my equation. And nothing happened, right? Well, wrong, no, what it's doing is it is solving this equation for us. So it is gonna give me one of these answers. The problem is, most of these answers are not on the graph as it's written. So all I have to do is zoom out. So I can kind of tell it's not gonna be negative five because I don't see anything here where this negative five would be. So let's just zoom out and let's see, is it negative 12? That doesn't look like it. Is it 79? That's gonna be all the way out here. Yep, looks like it's 79. And if we go all the way out to 204, notice we don't see anything out there. And this is how it's gonna look um, on the um, graph. It's gonna look just like a, a straight, vertical line. We've seen this in other questions I've talked about for this test. Uh, when we have a, a two variable equation, an x and a y, it's going to take a more familiar shape. It's going to maybe curve or it's going to be a line that has an angle to it. Those are just normal two variable equations like you graph probably in school on the xy plane. This is still that. This is an x equals equation, but, but it, it's going to look vertical because basically what Desmos is doing is it's solving all this algebra. It's doing all the work that you would have done on your paper. And it's getting very quickly to the last line of your work, which would be X equals 79. So it's just graphing that line, right? I can even show you uh, X equals 79. There it is, right? It just went right over that, right? It's the black and the purple. I know they're similar colors, but you can see they're just kind of covering over each other. So that's what this is doing, is it is very quickly taking that complicated algebra equation and simplifying it down to just this simple x equals that we wanted. Uh, that's awesome. Desmos just solves algebra equations for you. So I think that that method there was the simplest and safest way. Maybe if you're a really good algebra, you could solve this fast, but I think the faster you go, the more likely you're gonna make a mistake. And I, I just don't wanna open the door to any mistakes at all, and I think that graphing it and just letting that uh, solution up here is the best case, the best way to do this kind of thing. I look at that equation and I'm instantly like, no, this is, this is risky. You got negatives, you got distribution, you've got fractions. These are all the places in math and algebra where students make the most mistakes. You've probably made them too. And we can't afford to lose a negative because if we do all that algebra work and lose a negative and get the wrong answer, I bet it's gonna be one of these wrong answers. And so we'll feel, feel, we will feel confident in an answer that is incorrect. And so it's much better to just let the calculator do it. Just enter it correctly, double check that you entered it correctly, and you should be fine to get most algebra solving questions right without actually doing any algebra. That's how you get better at the PSAT and SAT. You learn the tools that they give you and you just use them as much as you can.